Like, are we gonna go through this again? Are we gonna go through this again? You can't keep coming back into my life like this. I, I've already got what I like. I'm, I'm happy with my current setup, but you, you, you keep coming back. And yes, you're, you're tempting me. You're, you're tempting me with your very high detail quality of 3D prints, but you smell, you stink, you're messy. I gotta wear gloves when dealing with you. I gotta clean up after you. And you give cancer, maybe kinda, sorta, at least bad allergic reactions in some people. Uh, but, but you're back again. So what are we gonna do here? What are we gonna do here? Uh. I don't know, print some really high quality detailed models or something. Okay, you've sold me. Let's print something cool then. To resin print or not to resin print? Is that a question? I don't know. Anyways, we are doing a resin printer again. It has been a hot minute since we've played with a resin printer on this channel. And as, as much as I want to move away from it. It's messy, it stinks, it's a pain in the butt to clean and post-process. It keeps drawing me back in. And that is simply for the fact that you just can't beat the results of a resin printer. Like, don't get me wrong, FDM machines have made great strides in the past couple years in getting print quality down for, especially for more detailed models. Uh, but at a certain point, you gotta go resin. And a little while ago, Elegoo reached out to me and they asked if I wanted to try out their new Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K printer. And I said, you know what? Sure, why not? It's been a while since we've messed with the cancer goop. Let's send it over. We'll, we'll give it a, a try. And I'll be honest, for the first time in a while, I'm actually having fun doing resin printing. Has there been a massive change in the way resin printing is done? Not really. Um, but there's been a lot of little incremental upgrades over the last resin machine I used that are included with this machine that have kind of made it suck a little bit less for those that aren't really heavy into the resin printing. And I'll be honest, after my experience with this, I'm probably gonna keep this machine active. In the past, after I've played with a resin machine, um, company sends me a machine, I do some testing, we unbox it, we do some projects with it, and then it tends to just get put back in the box or put on a shelf and forgotten about. Uh, this time, I'm gonna probably keep it on the shelf. We're probably gonna keep using this. Uh, we've got some projects in the in the pipeline that will benefit from having the resin printer. So what do we got here? Well, this is the Elegoo Saturn for Ultra 16K. Names are getting really long with resin printers. And uh, it's, it's a pretty nice resin printer. It's got some features on it that I really dig. It is fast. It actually has something that you may have seen on the Prusa resin printers, the bed tilts on this machine. So as it's printing, the bed is constantly drooping. So instead of having to lift the bed up and then come back down, which actually causes some issues with resin printing because sometimes if the suction is a little too much, you can cause the print to fall off the bed. By tilting it, there's much less suction involved with that. It breaks away the print off the FEP sheet a lot cleaner and it's much faster. So this machine actually prints pretty quick for a resin machine. Resin machines are already fast, but this prints even faster, which is better. Uh, for print volume, we have about, it's about 210 millimeters by 120 millimeters by about 220 millimeters approximately print volume, which is, I guess, about medium size for a resin printer. I've had smaller printers in the past. Um, it also has a webcam. This machine has network connectivity. So I've been using Cheetobox, the basic version, the free version to slice and print with this machine. And it actually has a webcam in it. And it's actually really high frame rate webcam. This is actually the best webcam on a 3D printer I've come across for an off the shelf printer. It's, it's kind of surprising. Um, and it does have the downside of having to use a slicer where there's a free version and a paid version. I, I really wish that trend would end with resin printers. It'd be nice if resin machines came with a license maybe, it's companies, that would be great. Uh, uh, but so far for my use case, the free version of Cheetah Box hasn't been too bad. Uh, we'll slice something up here in a minute and we'll get a project going. Um, and the ability to transfer files to it uh, without having to deal with SD cards or thumb drives is actually appreciated as well. Uh, Elegoo also did send over uh, their wash and cure station, so we're gonna use that. So before we dive too far into it, let's uh, get something sliced up and let's print something. 
Okay, so when you turn the machine on, there's a bit of a startup process. It does some self checks. The setup for this machine actually is very nice and very easy. Uh, I live streamed it all on this channel. So I'll have a link to the unboxing and setup live stream in the description below if you wanna check it out. But when you power it up, it goes through some self checks, make sure everything is good. And then once you're ready, we're gonna move over to the computer here and start slicing something. So I'm just gonna open up a project here. Uh, so we have our models here. And again, I'm using the, the Cheetah Pox basic free version here. Uh, it, it's got enough. It has the ability to hollow models, put your holes in, put supports on. It's missing some of the power user features. Some people that are more into resin printing may want, but for basic use case, getting your feet wet in resin printing, I find it's good enough. I'm not gonna go through a whole tutorial on how to properly slice stuff for resin printing. There's videos online for that already from people that know way more about resin printing. So check those ones out. So we have it sliced here. Uh, as you can see, we can go through our model. We could see all the, the different layers and whatnot. This is pretty normal if you've done resin printing before. And we're gonna use network sending because I've set this machine up on my network. I've gone through the setup process. So we can just click our printer here and then we're gonna hit send. Now, when it comes to resin slicers, it takes a while for it to do this. The whole process of saving the file takes quite a bit of time really compared to FDM. And then you have to transfer it over after. So we're gonna let this do its thing here. And files are transferring. This is over Wi-Fi. Uh, this machine, let me double check. Yeah, it doesn't have ethernet. So you are gonna have to go through the, wi the Wi-Fi's uh, if you do wanna connect it to your network. You can of course also transfer it using uh, thumb drives if you really want to. And then once the file's transferred over, you would just click print here and it would start printing. Uh, but we're not gonna do that right now. But what we are gonna do is I'm just gonna show you here the uh, the webcam. So let's open this up here, Chi2 Manager. And you could click on it here. Uh, you could see all the files that we have already uploaded on the internal storage here. You can expand it by adding a thumb drive if you need more storage. Uh, also, you could check video surveillance because this has a webcam built into it with a light. There's a little light in there. And I'll be honest, as you can see already, this webcam, is surprisingly good quality for an included webcam. Like this, look at look at this frame rate. Look at this frame rate. It's a little overexposed with the lid open, uh, but look at this frame rate. Like that's pretty good for for any 3D printer, let alone a resin machine. Unfortunately, it does have the downside where it's a resin printer, so you're not going to be able to see the print for the first couple layers or a couple hundred layers sometimes until it's out of the resin itself. So that that's just something you're going to have to, you know, either pause the print after a couple layers just to make sure it's going good or just roll with it and find out when it emerges from the resin if it's going good. Uh, and if you go into your history here, I believe you can actually pull up uh, it's like folder. Is that it? You can pull up the time lapse of the print. Uh, so it has a built in time lapse feature. So, so there you go. So it's actually really nice when it comes to some of these added features to the printer just to make quality of life a little bit easier. So if you have a print fail, you can, uh, you can check the time lapse to figure out what happened. Or if you're just making fun YouTube videos, you can pull that footage and use it as a time lapse, like I probably will in this video. Uh, so we've got it set up. We're gonna go ahead and start the print. And when it's done, we'll go through the favorite part of resin printing that everyone loves, post-processing. Let's get to that. And our print is now finished. And I've brought the printer up on the desk here because we're about to do everyone's favorite part of resin printing, and that is post-processing your print. It sucks. It, it's the one part or one of the biggest things about resin printing that I just do not like. You need extra materials. You need isopropyl alcohol. You need a wash and cure station. You're gonna need gloves. You're gonna need a mask. You're gonna wanna wear glasses. It, it's, post-processing resin is messy. I hate it. it. It's something I wish we could get rid of but it's kind of the nature of the beast. Now, while I'm doing this, I do just want to give a one shout out here to um, this part of the Elegoo Saturn uh, 4 Ultra 16. These things really, these names for resin printers are really starting to get towards computer monitor territory. But anyways, um, is, is the fact that this tilts open. 
This is the first resin printer I've had where the lid just kind of tilts open, which considering I have this on a shelf with a shelf above it, um, this is actually really nice to have. Having to remove the whole top every time on some of the other resin printers I've used in the past got really annoying really quick. So having this is kind of nice. Um, so let's get this print off the printer. And I have a little setup here to make this a little bit easier and a little less messy, an old paint tray. I keep my spatulas and whatnot in because this is something I wish more resin printers have. I know it's an add-on, but I, I wish at least some of the higher end resin printers started shipping with it more. And that is flex plates because removing the print from the resin printer, it's annoying and messy. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, it comes with a drip tray that you install uh, because the bed tilts on here, you really don't want to get resin into the whole mechanism of how this operates. So we put this little tray here to protect everything. Uh, we lift up our locking tab and out comes the bed. And now we need to scrape our print off of the bed because this doesn't have a flex plate. So we're, we're back to doing it like our forefathers did like Neanderthals and just chipping the print off the bed. And you're gonna to wanna to wear safety glasses when doing this because uh, the last thing you want to happen is a little bit of semi-solid resin come flying off the bed while you're removing the print or while you're breaking off your supports and get embedded in your eye. It sucks. Ask me how I know. So there we go there. You wanna make sure that your bed is really clean. You don't wanna have any leftover hardened piece on there because that's just asking to break your screen. Go put that on, reinstall that, remove that. And I'm just gonna close this for now. And now we gotta break off all our supports. Now, uh, depending on how good you are with setting up your resin settings, this could be a pretty easy process. Or you could do what I do and just cheat and just look for models that are pre-supported. It, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Although the problem with pre-supported models, if you are trying to change the scaling of a model that is already pre-supported because you want to print it either bigger or smaller, you may run into issues uh, with stuff failing, which I've found happen in the past. Let's get these supports off. Resin supports come off pretty good for the most part. There are a few tricks you can do to make the process a little bit easier. Uh, you can heat it up, so use hot water. Submerge the print in hot water before you do it. Um, that just weakens the supports. It makes it a little bit easier for everything to come apart. And also, I do make it a point to remove the supports before washing the print, uh, simply for the fact that the isopropyl alcohol gets dirty as you clean your prints with it. And if you're also washing support material, you're, you're washing more soluble resin into the ISO. So I like to make it a habit to break my supports off, clean up my prints, and then wash them. And usually what I do is after uh, I've cleaned up enough prints where I'm starting to build up a decent amount of this uh, support material, I'll just take this whole tray and just leave it outside for a couple hours in the sun and it'll just all harden up and then I'll just chuck it in the garbage. So now we're gonna throw this all in our ISO bath. Put the lid on, wipe the excess resin off my gloves and now we're gonna wash it. And this washing cure station, it was sent to me uh, by Elegoo along with the printer. I like it. The downside with a washing cure station is the bigger the printer you have, the bigger the washing cure station you need. And it's a two-step process. It's a wash and a cure. And uh, with this one, it works really good, although it does have the downside um, where it's really loud and annoying. So we're gonna let that clean the print now. Okay, and the annoying whining is done, which means it is now washed. Um, it's nice, you could set the timer on here for how long you wanna run the wash or cure cycle for. Although it's kind of annoying because it goes up by 30 second increments and you kind of have to mash the button like a Neanderthal to make it go up, you just can't hold it. But anyways, let's get this print out now. And whew, that ISO is strong. So again, the bigger the resin printer you go with, the bigger the wash and cure station you're gonna need, which means also the more isopropyl alcohol you're gonna have to buy. So uh, if you get into resin printing, uh, Costco usually has isopropyl and they sell it by bigger jugs and it goes on sale every now and then. So you might wanna keep an eye out for that. <laughs> so we'll get that out. 
Now again, it is not cured yet. All we've done is wash off the excess liquid resin, but these parts are still semi-cured. They're still not fully cured. So we have to run it through a proper cure cycle. And what I like to do is you, you want these parts to be dry because if there's any leftover isopropyl alcohol on a part when you put it in for the final cure process, it'll give you, um, a, it'll show up. It, it'll give a different finish to the part um, after it fully cures. So I'm gonna let these air dry while we get the cure station set up because this is both a wash and a cure station. So this one does have the annoying lid that you have to take all the way on and off. So you can't really put this on a shelf, unfortunately, if you don't have clearance above it, but it is what it is. So we'll let these dry for a bit. And then once everything's dried off here, we will go and put it in the uh, cure station. So it's been a couple of minutes. We've made sure all the support and everything we want to remove off these is removed. It's all dry. There's no leftover ISO. And now we can go ahead and cure it. Now you really don't need a wash and cure station depending on your setup. You can use water soluble resins that you can wash in soapy water, for example. And you can always, you know, cure it using the power of the sun. But that can be a bit annoying, let's be honest. So if you're seriously getting into resin printing, you're gonna wanna get a wash and cure station, so get this all set up here. Now, one thing you really want to be careful of with wash and cure stations is they do both. You do not want to accidentally run the cure cycle with your ISO tank in there because it'll cause all the little bits of resin that's floating around or stuck on the walls of your of your ISO vat It'll cause it to dry up and, and harden. It makes a mess. And you don't wanna run the wash cycle uh, when you're curing prints because it'll just spin it really fast and fling it everywhere. So just make sure you have it on the right setting uh, when you start it up. And now we're going to let it cook. At least this one isn't as loud. Hey, and with that all cured now, we can go ahead and if we need to, which we have to in this case, go ahead and put our print together. Now everything's cured, so you can handle it with your ungloved fingies. Uh, now with resin, it's actually pretty cool because you can use resin itself to glue different parts together. So if you have something like a little UV light here, you can just use resin and just cure it using a UV light to attach your parts together. Uh, but since these parts are kind of big and the UV light really doesn't penetrate into the part itself, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some super glue and E6000 to hold this all together. So we'll fast forward through the work. And there we have it, our print is done. And I have a few other prints out here and I'll, I'll put some B-roll up of all these prints that I've done on the LGU Saturn IV Ultra 16K. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this video. Final thoughts, this will probably be the first resin printer that I am actively going to keep out and ready to go. In the past, when I've played with resin printers, um, I'll, I'll print with them for a bit, but they tend to just get put on a shelf and forgotten a belt or just packaged back up because I'll be honest, I really don't do a lot of resin printing. FDM is the type of 3D printing that makes more sense for the projects I do. But lately, especially with getting more into cosplay stuff, I kind of want to also start painting minifigures as well down the line. It, it's, it's becoming more and more practical for me to have a resin printer. And I will say my initial results and through initial use case of using the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra 16K, they really need shorter names for these things, um, I'm happy with it. I, I think it's a pretty good value for what you get. The, the fact that it has a webcam built in, you can remote monitor your prints, you can send prints to it over the network. Uh, it's really fast with its tilting vat. It's got a pretty decent volume for a resin printer and it's pretty easy to use. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm thankful Elegu sent it to me for testing and evaluation. And if you do wanna get one of these for yourself, I will have a link to it in the video description below. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, again, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator and uh, don't forget to like the smash button on the way out. Cheers.